I've been doing this about 20 years, and uh, boy, it never ceases to amaze me some of the things we come up with uh, working the, the night shift like this. It's a full moon tonight, so um, we're probably going to have uh, several calls that are quite unusual. It gets real entertaining out here after dark. Unit 1, Unit 1, we have a 10-200 at uh, 811 Cancer, please. Uh, Roger, uh, this is your unit. Uh, verify that at 10 200. Affirmative, that's at 10 200, 811 Kessler, over. Okay, you already on the scene there? Uh, we have three on the scene as it is. Okay, all right, we're, uh, we're in route. To... 10 200! I know, go ahead and move these people back. Let's just move them back. Uh, yeah, we're on the scene. Uh, we're going to go check this out. Okay. Hey, Rich. What's up, man? How you doing? Believe it. What happened? Oh, oh. Wait a minute. 10 200, right? Almost a 400. I'm telling Back you. Back at you, pal. Like that, man. 20 years. It's... Okay, what we got here? We got a 30 year What do we got? Male. Male. He's despondent, disoriented. He's not even quite sure what happened. Okay. I'm glad you're here because. Pretty messy in there? You're here. Okay. Only thing I can tell you to do is well, here. step lightly. Yeah, cold and flu season and everything. Okay. I, I'm used to yeah. this stuff. Hey, Joe, keep those people back. I'm going to go in and check the seat. Hey, hold it. Wait, hold wait, it. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, hold it. Hold it a minute there, buddy. Rich, grab him. Rich, get his arm, Rich. Get away from no. me. Get his arm. Let go, buddy. Drop him. Just drop him. Drop him. Drop him. What the heck is that? Hold on there, partner. Hold on. Hold on, partner. Get away from me. Okay. Hey, what is this? Hold on, man. Watch your head. Get in there. Come on. Okay. You got him, Rich? Yeah. All right. Uh, well, you're having a... No, just sit down in the car. Okay. What we got here looks like Rich... Uh, this guy's got a house training problem or something, huh? Yeah. How you doing, sweetheart? What's he, what he's done, apparently, is, uh, I don't know, you, have, you, have you seen this before? You, one on, the, on that one last year. Uh, guy couldn't house train his dog properly, so he put him in a plastic bag, put some leg holes in it. See, and, you know, he doesn't want to supervise the dog, and he still thinks this is going to keep his house clean. And where do you, you put know? your suits, too? You well, yeah, the bad part about it is this dog's been in here for a couple days, it looks like, you know? At least. Well, <laughs> these things are good up to 30 gallons. That's what it says on the box. Hey, look at it, he already had a blowout. I let it outside to go. It comes back in the side the house and goes in the house. It pees and poops in the house. Okay. It poops in the house, it'll pee in the house. Well, why don't you watch it like I told you the last time? You remember I told you, you have to watch Try the... and watch. Well, you know, I don't... Trying isn't good enough. What what happened here, sir? Did you see anything? He was just kind of a loner. Kind of a loner. What? And how about you, sir? Hey, man, you want to buy a cat? Right Is this what we got? Yeah, don't touch anything. We're still bagging it. Okay. Don't touch it, please. No. Don't. That's touch the biggest it. one over there. It is. Okay. So just, just. Stay let's. Away. All right. Let's have a. Let's go back over here. Um, Rich. Ah. Uh, ooh. What? Well, is this guy a rookie or what? Well, 20 years of this game, I'm still not used to this smell. Well, we poked a little bit of fun at house training, but actually, that's pretty serious business. You know, the way you introduce house training and the structure of the dog's life in the very first few days that you have your new puppy. Come on. Come on, Aggie. Go outside. If you want your dog to go in just one area of your yard, you're going to have to go to that area every time. That means you just don't let them out the door and stand there and wait for them. You actually go with them so that when they do use the area that you picked out that you want to have to be like your zone for that kind of thing, then you can tell them how great they are for doing it and you just kind of keep in that area. That's all you have to do. Eventually they're going to go to that area. Now, if you don't really care too much, your dog will most likely pick the area that, that they like best and they'll start kind of going to that same general area every time. That's right. 
that when she gets done, I'm going to praise her like she's the best dog in the world. And remember, if nothing happens, if it's first thing in the morning and if nothing happens here, and I know she's been in all night and she's full, but she just didn't do it, I don't take her back in and let her run around in the house. I put her back in the sky kennel, wait for 15 minutes, then I'm going to give it another shot. I'm going to be out here with her. So that's a few tips on uh, house training without all the mess. Important when you introduce your dog to the crate for the first time that you try to make it a pleasurable experience. I mean, this shouldn't be like prison for your dog. They should see it as something pleasant and, and uh, kind of neat. Now, one of the reasons we use a crate is because dogs are pack animals. They're used to growing up in a den. This goes way back to their wolf heritage. And it's actually quite a secure feeling to have all these walls around you and to be able to look out and be all safe and secure in there. But at, at the same time, they have to be isolated from you, so they might want to whine or cry a little bit. Let's lessen the anxiety of separation by introducing them to the crate with a toy. You like that? Huh? We're going to put that in there with you. And then when I put the dog in, I may want to put a few of the of the yummies in there. Now, sometimes if I have a dog that's kind of afraid, you want to go in there? Want to go in there? Good. So you put the yummies in there, and the dog gets the yummies, and you close the door. Okay? Now, if you get any crying at all, you can do a couple different things. Number one, you can ignore it for a little while. If it escalates to the point of being unbearable, you can use your squirt gun, you can tap on the top, you can shake the crate a little bit, but never, and I mean never, let the dog out of the crate while it's screaming and crying and complaining. That teaches it that all it's got to do is scream loud enough and you're going to let it out. Okay? Now, uh, if, you, uh, if you don't have someone else in your family that can help you with this, then come Monday morning when you have to go back to work, you're not going to be able to let the dog out of the crate every couple hours because, you know, you're going to be gone. Now, there's two ways you can handle this. Uh, number one, what I prefer to do, I look at raising a dog as kind of like raising a child. If I have to, and I don't have any friends that can do this, I'll even hire somebody, like a babysitter, to come over at lunch, let the dog out of the crate, let it go out to its area, praise it for going, bring it back in, and put it back in the crate again. Um, if you're in a situation where you're going to be gone for 10 hours and there's nobody that can come in and let the dog out, then you're going to have to let it out into a little bit larger area where, where it can eliminate. Now, they used to call this paper training, but I'll tell you, I don't like to use newspapers. I think they're harder to transfer over to the outdoors. What I use is good old-fashioned cat litter. Put a litter box in a small room that's got tile and a baby gate up or the doors closed where the dog's got a little bit of space to move around. You've got your cat litter, you've got your sky, your sky crate here, and the dog can use the cat litter just like a cat. Okay. Now, the other thing that is a real problem for some dogs is separation anxiety. They get so uh, nervous when they're left alone that they cry and just lather themselves up practically because they're so uh, deathly afraid of being alone. I use a little bit of a natural phenomenon of digestion to help me with this. I'll take one of these Kong toys and I'll stuff a bunch of peanut butter in here. And when I leave the dog, this is the only time he gets this special treat. He only gets this special treat when he's in the sky kennel. So we associate the sky kennel with something positive. We can put the special treat in with him, and as soon as he takes a few bites of that peanut butter out of this thing, it'll trigger his digestive enzymes to his stomach, and he gets a little tired, kind of like you do right after you eat a Thanksgiving dinner. It's a natural sedative. So that's a couple tips about how to leave your dog in the crate so that you don't have a lot of noise and you don't have a lot of separation anxiety.